Smarties, today we are discussing clinical notes. We share why it is important, what these notes need to do for you as a clinician, and what should actually be documented. If you are interested in having more of these types of conversations and learning more tips and tricks that we have learned in our businesses, don't hesitate to reach out to us for some business coaching. It is something we are both deeply passionate about doing. It's a surprise gift of this podcast is learning how much we love sharing what has helped make our businesses thrive. So reach out to us at Rachel and Steph at LearnSmarterPodcast.com or you can reach out to us individually through our websites. My website is www.capedtherapy.com. That's K as in Kite, A as in Apple, P as in Peter, P as in Paul. And Steph's website is www.myedtherapist.com. Let's dig in. You want to learn faster, but sometimes working harder is just not the answer. You have to learn smarter. The Educational Therapy Podcast. Hi, Smarties. Welcome to episode 299 of Learn Smarter, the Educational Therapy Podcast. I'm Stephanie Pitts. And I'm Rachel Cap. And this is episode 299. How many years have we been podcasting stuff? Five? 2018? Yeah, because it was the year I got married. We launched the podcast. Oh, we did a couple things. Yeah. (laughs) So in May, it'll be six. Yes. Wow. Six years of podcasting. I'm excited for our conversation next week with Katrina, who's our director of operations at CAP Educational Therapy Group and my ed therapist and an educational therapist in both our practices. Mm -hmm. It's going to blow my mind that we've done... 300 episodes. It's a milestone. What an achievement. It is an achievement. And if you feel like celebrating with us, go ahead and give us five stars and a review Mm -hmm. wherever you listen so that it can help other people find the podcast or better yet, share your favorite episode. That would be really fun to see and tag us on Instagram at Learn Smarter Podcast. Hmm. Okay, so now we're talking about something that we never anticipated talking about on the podcast, which is business stuff. (laughs) Yep. It just goes to show that you got to be open to what feels like the right next step, even if it wasn't your original intent. The evolution of things, yes, for sure. So, Steph, when I pitched this episode to you, what were your initial thoughts about it? Mm, Really? (laughs) <laughs> Is that something that we really need to talk about on the podcast? We talk about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Some of them make it on the podcast and some of them don't. Yeah. And this is a conversation that we've had. But when you said, let's make it an episode, which you've done lately, like you've shocked me about a couple of things where you wanted to make it an episode. And I thought, oh, OK. But oh, no, it didn't even occur to me. So, yeah, here we are. So my origin story for this episode was that. Frankly, I don't like taking notes. No, I know you don't. It's hard for me, and I needed a refresher on why it's important and what makes them meaningful. And sometimes I use the podcast as a way of figuring out what I think about something. Mm -hmm. And so I just had a session yesterday with a client, and English is an area of stretch for him. So I'll see him on and off about writing stuff. And in reading this essay that he had submitted, I was like, okay, this is not complete yet. All this writing was, was you figuring out what you think. Mm -hmm. It's not a complete essay yet. And he had submitted it and had gotten some feedback on it. And I was like, I totally agree with this feedback. I don't think you are done. You are done figuring out what you think, but you're not done writing. And so we use this podcast a lot of the times to figure out what we think about that. One of the things that really resonates with me in that lesson was when we did the episode on our framework. Mm -hmm. That's an early episode. We called it the ABCs of educational therapy. And we'll link that episode in the show notes. If you've been a long time listener, you'll remember that episode. There's a freebie alongside of it. But sitting down and figuring out How we do what we do has made so many other things easier. So figuring out how to make clinical notes easier and more meaningful is an area that I want to improve upon. And so in writing this episode, I think it allowed that a little bit. It made it 
more intentional, which is what you needed. We're using this episode as a way to make clinical notes more meaningful for me. I hope that by me sharing that it's a struggle for me, you feel more seen and heard because I don't think I'm alone in this at all. No, definitely not. I've tried different things over the years. So let's get back to the basics. We started where we start almost everything. If we had a framework for how we wrote episodes, this would be, the, <laughs> which we don't, maybe we should, but why is it important? So why is it important for us to document and take clinical notes? It's to help you guys be and help myself and help you be intentional about the notes. Mm -hmm. So thinking about why they're important, it's a documentation of progress. Mm. And that is really important in the long term. So it's the reminders of the progress that are so important when you're looking at goals and what the next goals need to be how far you've come, where you need to go. Those reminders are extremely helpful because you forget. You forget as clinicians, as people, you forget progress. It's so much easier to look forward, but sometimes remembering to look back is just as important. Things also that come up like IEP meetings, you have notes on what's going on, or as a clinician, you might get called to testify. In a case. It's happened. That's why she's bringing this yes. up. It has happened to us. Yes. And it was years later that I had to go back to notes. And it's also best practices for knowing each client and what's specifically going on. And that means having age, grade, any important things like diagnoses, etc. Having all of that documented is important. And obviously in a secure spot that it's not where everybody can see it. But those kinds of things for yourself are important. And it's also important as a client might outgrow working with one clinician or need to change to another clinician for whatever reason. It's not ideal, but it happens. And so having documentation of progress and what is currently being worked on is extremely important. So Rach, this is perfect for you right here. What does it need to do for you? I think with everything that is sort of going on with me personally and professionally, you know, Steph, this year we're doing a lot more coaching. We're doing a lot more speaking. If you want to invite us to come speak at your organization, we'd love the opportunity to do that. So definitely reach out to us at Rachel and Steph at LearnSmarterPodcast.com. But with everything going on, it's like what we tell the learners, when they are creating a system for managing their time, they need to write things down so it doesn't take up that memory RAM. Mm -hmm. And I need to be writing these things down and I need to be writing what's happening in session down so that it is documented and I have a plan for future Rachel. Mm -hmm. It allows me to work towards goals. It allows me to see on paper trends. Mm hmm. It really is important with parent check-in calls. Mm -hmm. And it also will reveal when I need to go to my mentors, when I need to go to you, when I need to go to other people that I trust, mm -hmm. that there is a question that needs to be worked on. Mm -hmm. And I need to sort of crowdsource that a little bit. I think you and I are really good about bringing that sort of stuff to each other, mm -hmm. but I model that with my team too, and try to be vulnerable when I have a question about a client and try to get some feedback and ideas from them too, because everybody is coming from a totally different experience in an ideal world, in my team setting and in your team setting, we want everybody to benefit from that. Yeah, absolutely. What would you add, Steph? I think just what you were trying to say is just being so intentional and using them as a strategy to be helpful rather than looking at it as sometimes what feels like a chore. Even though, listen, let's take it back to laundry. 5% <laughs> of the podcast has been talking about laundry. But Steph, look, my couch doesn't look like a hot mess express anymore. Can we talk about what the update is on the laundry basket situation? In the order of episodes that we've recorded, we talked about my laundry basket goals. This is the latest episode that we've recorded. We're not in a funky order. So yes. Okay. So look at my couch, which was formerly laundry. 
full of laundry. Uh Uh-huh. Clean laundry. Clean laundry. Now, what has happened is... You guys, if you could see her, she just, like, (laughs) sat up and clapped. (laughs) And she's got her hands, like, at her chest ready to tell everyone everything. Okay. (laughs) So... I don't think it's any surprise. I don't do it all alone. And we have an amazing Uh nanny who's been just the best thing that ever happened to her family. And she said to me a couple days ago, she's like, Rachel, thank you so much for the baskets. It's so much easier. Mm -hmm. She goes, I don't know why I didn't think of this. (laughs) Because she's able to just bring the laundry to the boys' rooms. And then as far as my laundry goes, because it's not part of her responsibility to do my laundry. Yeah. But oftentimes she wants to. So she will like fold it all up for me. And right now that laundry basket is sitting in my room, Uh folded, and I'm just fishing clothes out of it. Yeah. So it's a better solution than me sort of walking into my hall across the house into my office to find clothes in my pile on the couch. It's better. Okay. It's a step in the right direction. It's absolutely a step in the right direction. How did we get on this? Because we were talking about the end goals of I brought it up because what's the worst chore? The worst chore is putting clothes away. Mm -hmm. That's why I got there. Mm -hmm. So notes can feel like a chore. Right. But it's a tool. Yeah. But how good is it when you can find what you want to wear at the exact moment you want to wear it, especially when it's cold? I hate that. So that's why I brought up laundry. Let's be honest, Steph. I'm just looking at which matching sweatsuit is... (laughs) Is available. (laughs) So the question is... Which one I'm going to wear that day? (laughs) Okay, but what if you can only find one and one? What if it's not the same colors? Are you willing to not have them be the same color? No, I need to be monochrome. Okay, so if you can only find the top in one color and the bottom in another color, then that's a problem. That's a problem for me. Okay, so let's imagine that's the problem... Right? The tool being able to find them close together and they're all folded. But going back to notes. Yes. (laughs) Even though it's hard and not our favorite thing to do, it is extremely helpful. Yes. For future Rachel and future Steph. Yes. And think about if you're a person that struggles with doing notes, think about some strategies that might help you be able to achieve this in a way that works for you. And knowing that it's going to help your future self. Perfect. Have a great week, Smarties. Have a great week, Smarties.